guys, it's Haley, and welcome to another bookish video. Today I have some book recommendations for you that are based on your favorite movies and shows, or maybe not your favorite. <laughs> Maybe they're just popular or maybe you've never heard of them, but as I describe the vibes of the movie or show, hopefully it will give you a good idea of what you're in for for this book recommendation. In this video, I have mostly thrillers and horror books as I usually have, but I've thrown in a couple sci-fi, a couple weird literary things. Y'all know basically what I like. Um, most of the movies that I'm gonna be referencing are horror and thriller as well. So if you like one, you'll probably like the other. If you didn't like one, maybe you'll like the execution better in another one. I don't know, girl, you use your own brain. <laughs> I'm just here to provide the recommendations. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. I will start out with one of the most surprising movies for me of this year. I loved it so much, and that is Blink Twice. I honestly, I don't like Channing Tatum, I'm sorry. Anything he's in, I'm just like, ugh, I'm probably not gonna like it. I don't know why. I have a bias against him. I'm sorry, I don't know. So I really wasn't expecting much from this movie, but it was so iconic. Directed by Zoe Kravitz and She Can Do No Wrong. It's basically commentary on misogyny when these two women get invited to this rich tech moguls island for this big party and they get into some harrowing things. It's definitely horror. There's definitely trigger warnings. When I saw this movie, Deja had texted me, if you don't subscribe to Deja, you definitely should. I'll link her down below. I love her so much. Deja had texted me and she said, tell me what book this movie reminds you of when you're done. And immediately I knew exactly what she was talking about because this book was screaming out to me through the entirety of the movie. And that is You Can Trust Me by Wendy Hurd. I loved this book so much. It is such a fast paced, interesting thriller about two girly best friends who kind of travel around around the country scamming men. And one of them gets into this relationship with this tech mogul and he's like, you know what? You should come to my island with me. And once they're there, things are not as they seem. Almost the exact same plot, but we do get more into the complex relationship between our main two female characters in the book. Obviously there's pages, there's time, there's more space to do that, which is why I love books more than movies usually. And this is just a really well executed thriller. It's a really satisfying read. I feel like it's cathartic. There's that feminist commentary, great commentary about the complexity of female relationships, female friendship. It just has so much. It took the themes of Blink twice and expanded upon them. And it has the same kind of crazy twists in different ways. I loved it so much. If you're looking for a fast paced, rich people drama thriller with something to say, you will love this. Next up, let's talk about Saltburn. I absolutely loved Saltburn. I love the vibes. I love the murder on the dance floor scene. I love everything Jacob Lord does. That man could Okay, redact all of that. If you don't know about Saltburn, it is basically about this guy who goes to uni, university, and he meets the Jacob Elordi character who's like this very posh rich guy. And he's like, you know what? You should come and spend the summer with me. And so he goes to stay with his rich friend, but there's like homoerotic vibes for the summer and he ends up getting into the dynamics of this rich family and carnage ensues. Apologies if there's a slight angle change. Anyway, Saltburn, such a great rich people drama movie. If you like Saltburn, I have three book recommendations for you, starting out with one of my favorite series of all time, which is We Were Liars, but I actually would recommend the prequel more than the actual book We Were Liars. This was one of my favorites of the last couple years and it basically just goes into the rich people drama dynamics of this uber rich family who summers in Martha's Vineyard. There's murder, there's darkness, there are family secrets that come to light. It is so similar to the themes that show up in Saltburn. 
it is YA, so it's not as intense if <laughs> the bathtub scene was too much for you in Saltburn. I think Family Liars will be okay for you. I also would recommend Good Rich People by Eliza Jane Brazier. This was one of my favorites of a few years ago. Easy, easy five-star read. It's kind of trippy and experimental for a thriller, which I love when a thriller plays with time, plays with perception, and kind of brings in some of those more horrifying elements to a traditional thriller plot. This is about a rich family that allows people to move into their guest house at a super, super low rate. It's like, basically they're living rent free because they're like, you know what? We're just very charitable and we love to welcome you and blah, blah, blah. But then they have this competition to see which family member can ruin the life of the person in the guest house the fastest. Insane. So, so good. My last recommendation for Saltburn is Other People's Clothes. I forget who the author is. I really love this book. It's weird literary fiction about this toxic and very interesting relationship between two girls who are roommates and their landlord, who is this rich woman who allows these two broke art students to live in her place while she is out of town, like traveling. And there's a very weird dynamic there. Things absolutely go off the rails similar to the way that they did in Saltburn. I love looking at wealth and class issues from a horror lens because it really is horrifying if you are on the wrong side of that dynamic. It can be so demeaning and so humiliating and I think all three of these books have beautiful commentary on that which is kind of one of the main themes of Saltburn. Next up let's go for a classic. One of my favorite movies that stars a young Rory Culkin who is one of my favorite actors. That is Signs directed by M. Night obviously. About this family who is slowly coming to realize that there is a foreign presence. They don't see the aliens directly, but there are signs, okay? If you like signs, which who doesn't, you gotta read Faux by Ian Reid. There are really, really similar themes in this book. This isn't actually my favorite Ian Reid. I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars, but I really enjoyed it and it has really similar vibes to signs. This is about a man and he gets a man another man okay this is i'm not selling it well it's a lot of men so far but basically this guy knocks on this other guy's door and he's like hey i'm from the government and we're basically gonna send you to space <laughs> And you won't know when it happens, but there will be signs kind of thing. So he's grappling with that. He's also grappling with the relationship with his wife, which is kind of going down the tubes. And just the whole idea of being in space and that line being blurred between our world and extraterrestrials is really interesting. It's interesting to think about how we would cope with that. I feel like that is the shared thread between signs and foe. Next up, I have a reality show to talk about and really if you like any reality dating show I think you're gonna like this book but specifically this book reminded me of Perfect Match on Netflix which I am absolutely obsessed with okay it is pure trash but I could sit there and psychoanalyze those bitches all day long and I do I'm a Chloe stan okay shout out Chloe from Too Hot to Handle and Perfect Match I literally am obsessed with her I think she's so cute um Mitchell you can literally get fucked. I hate that guy. Get furked, I mean, because he literally is like this Christian dude. No hate to the Christian community, but like, I'm sorry. You can't say fuck. You have to say furk. I'm going to kill you. Anyway, if you like a cringe reality dating show, but you kind of wish that something bad would happen to the cast of annoying people, then you should read One Perfect Couple by Ruth Ware. This is her new release and I loved it so much. It's about a couple who gets a chance to go on this reality dating show competition show and it's kind of like Survivor meets Love Island because they end up getting stranded 
on this island during production and they have to figure out a way to survive it's kind of like a lord of the flies situation that develops between the cast members it is genuinely horrifying the nature scenes were really scary that's a threat but also like the very human threat the psychological horror of like the us against you kind of feelings and of course like the dating dynamics and the drama of it all this book really has it all it is so much fun so easy to read and if you like reality tv and you find yourself binging a lot of it and not reading a lot, maybe try this one because it will have similar vibes. Next up, let's talk about one of my favorite shitty horror movies and you know I got a lot of them so this is saying a lot. The Ruins. I fucking love The Ruins. It is an adaption in the early 2000s of one of my most favorite horror books of all times, The Ruins by Scott Smith. So if you haven't read The Ruins, you definitely need to. It is 10 times better than the movie, but the movie adaption still has a special place in my heart because it is just classic Y2K horror, dumb tourists getting picked off by the natives in the land where these white people are they're like hey you think you can be here in these ruins and just fuck around with your gopro hell no you're dead and i love that kind of trope in horror if you like the ruins whether it's the book or the movie i think you should read tribesmen by adam cesare this is such a like cringe book like Every single character makes you cringe so much. They're all horrible, horrible people, but you get to see them die in really entertaining ways. And the synopsis is very comparable to The Ruins. Basically, we're following this production team who's making a shitty horror movie and they want to make it as realistic as possible. So they go on location to this deserted island where a tragedy occurred. And some of the cast members are like, oh, should we be here? Like this seems a little unethical but it's the 80s and they just want to make a slasher for cheap so they're like you know what fuck it and they end up getting possessed by murdered native people from the land and turning on each other it is so entertaining it is a slasher from the word go it is shitty it's problematic it feels like 80s vibes and it's everything to me I love it. I love this bullshit. Next up, let's talk about another one of my all-time faves, and that is, of course, Jennifer's Body. This is the bisexual horror movie for the weird bisexual girls who want to eat your soul. Jennifer's Body. Iconic performance from Megan Fox. She is so hot. She is so perfect. She is not killing people. She's killing boys, period. End of story. Homoerotic friendship and possession. Just what every girl needs. If you like Jennifer's Body, and who doesn't, then I think you should read these two books. Obviously, the one that I see recommended a lot for this movie is my Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix, which I love, I cried at, I gave five stars. It is so good about these high school girls. One of them gets possessed and her best friend is desperately trying to save her. They have a very interesting relationship dynamic, so much commentary, 80s nostalgia, love it, love it, love it. But I feel like that was kind of a basic recommendation for Jennifer's Body. I also wanna recommend The Return by Rachel Harrison. Y'all know I love Rachel Harrison. This is probably my my least favorite of all of her books. It's her debut, but it's still really, really good, really entertaining. It's about this group of girlfriends who go to this like Instagram hotel and Rachel Harrison like gets the vibes, like she gets it because the vibes are off immediately. When you walk in to this hotel and you get the vibe of the friendship group, you can just tell, oh, okay, I've, I've felt this way before. And one of the girls is possessed and they have to stop her from doing all of these insane things at this very, cutesy Instagrammable place. The juxtaposition is amazing. The horror is insane, especially the scene at the end is so good. I think the pacing and the flow of the book was where I had my issues with it, but other than that, it's perfect and really, really similar to the vibes of Jennifer's Body. Next up, if you like the Strangers franchise, which I absolutely love. I love home invasion horror, and that's basically what this is, is like masked people break into your house and slowly torture you and humiliate you. 
I love that shit. I loved the new Strangers movie. I, it's not like a favorite of all time or anything. I think it's like, I enjoyed it in a shitty way, but I really liked it. Also, Madeline Pesch is so hot. If you like the Strangers, any of those movies, then you should read Anybody Home by Michael J. Seidlinger. This was one of my favorites of last year. It is pretty extreme horror and it does some really weird trippy things. When I recommend this, a lot of people in the comments say that they didn't like it. So this is a very niche recommendation if you like home invasion horror. I personally love it. It's like one of the only things that actually scares me. Obviously the allegory in the book is like the house represents you, like the person. So it's more about the metaphor of like being perceived, being invaded. And the way that it's written is really, really cool. We're following these people who are planning this break-in. So it's written in second person singular perspective. So they're saying like, you will da 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 da. You will da 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 da. It is so haunting and so well done. So unique. I just, I love this book so much. It deeply horrified me, but it's also very complex and psychological. God, I love it so much. Niche wreck, but if you're willing to give it a chance, Hopefully you like it. Next up, let's talk about my girl, Maxine. Oh my God, I love this movie so much. It was such a departure from the rest of the trilogy with Pearl and X. I definitely preferred Pearl and X. I would say my ranking is X and then Pearl and then Maxine. But either way, I love Maxine Minx as a character. And the main character of this book reminded me a lot of her. There's very like 80s Hollywood gritty glamor vibes. In in this book and that is I Can See Your Lies by Izzy Lee. This is a little horror novella, really tiny, really digestible. You can read it in a sitting, I did. And it's about this woman who is an actress in Hollywood and her mother was pretty famous actress as well. However, she disappeared and we're trying to figure out what happened to her as our main character is also trying to outrun this man who wants to hurt her. Very similar to the plot of Maxine. Maxine is running the whole movie and she's running in this atmosphere of, like I said, like gritty 80s horror, but there's like a little glamorous side because it's in Hollywood and blah, blah. This is very much that, but there's an added speculative element in here that I loved so much, which is our main character and her daughter and her disappeared mother all have this very interesting generational gift, I guess, where they can tell when someone is lying because like black smudges or black bubbles pop up on someone's face when they're telling a lie. So that definitely aids her investigation. It is so trippy, it's so scary, but it's also very easy to read. I absolutely love this. If you're a Maxine girly, you have to read it. Let's take a little break from horror and get back to the bisexual vibes of it all. Challengers! Oh my god! Not gonna be talking about challengers, girl. I. The Jaro! The Jaro! Can we talk about the fucking Jaro? I love this movie! I love this movie! It is the most tense, atmospheric movie driven by a killer score that I've ever seen. Oh my god, it's so fucking good. Zendaya, ah! that one man with that ugly, stupid, little, wise-ass smirk. Ah, I just want to hit him and then I want to, ah! Oh my God. And then the other one who's like a pathetic little puppy dog, I literally would love to step on his neck. Like every single person in Challengers is iconic. It's basically about a thruple, weird, homoerotic relationship weird, 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 fucked up dynamic between these three tennis players. And if you liked Challengers, you will love Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This has the same exact metaphor that was used in Challengers, where the game of tennis represents the dynamic between all of the characters. In this book, the game of tennis and what is happening in the tennis matches directly reflects the character arc of our main character, Carrie Soto, who was at one point the most famous and most accomplished female tennis player in America. Now she's retired and her titles are being overtaken by the new like young buck on the scene or whatever. I've never used the phrase young buck before. I don't know why that just came out of my mouth. Um, but she's coming out of retirement to reclaim her titles, but she's old 
and she has relationship drama and she's really a divisive person in the sports world like she's kind of like a tanya harding-esque kind of character it is so emotional that metaphor with the game of tennis is so well done there are the fucked up relationship dynamics similar to challengers this is one of my favorite books that i read this year it is so 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 good i read it during the olympics and it was like chef's kiss perfect next up we have a wreck for the season oh my god so fun so exciting if you like trick or treat which is one of my favorite movies to watch every single halloween it's a fun anthology of all of these different halloweeny stories and this little like trick or treat sack guy named sam who has this little lollipop that he uses to stab people it's so much fun if you like trick or treat and you want something to read during Halloween time that's the same vibes. Dead Leaves by Keelan Patrick Burke is perfect. Obviously, it's nine short stories, so it has the same feel of an anthology where it's all these different things, but there are really great themes that connect all of the stories. It all feels very atmospheric, perfect for fall, and so many of these stories I gave five stars. I was actually so impressed with this collection. Some of my favorite stories in this book are Tonight the Moon is Ours, which is about like young love figuring yourself out and also like this weird speculative horror element will you tell them i died quietly the tradition one night of the year like you see what i mean there's like a lot of like halloween centric stuff like that's the theme here every single horror story has like a different little message what book is more fall coded show me a more fall coded book than dead leaves next up let's talk about strange darling i have kind of mixed thoughts on this horror movie we are following this girl who goes on a I was gonna say first date, but it's it's more of like a hookup situation. And she asks him this like playful, pithy question. She's like, so are you a serial killer? Are you gonna kill me? <laughs> Thinking that he's not, but then things take a turn very quickly. But it's this game of cat and mouse because we have a really strong female character. And once things turn tense, you don't know who is the real villain. I loved this movie, but I will say I could tell that it was written from the perspective of a man. And I always appreciate a man who wants to write a strong female character, but the execution here, me, me, me. Also, like, you can shoot an entire movie in 35mm and, like, not put it in the opening sequence. I feel like that's a little cringe, just but I still really liked the movie. I enjoyed my experience watching it. And if you liked it too, then I have two of my favorite books to recommend you. First off, we have The Girl in 6E by A.R. Torre. This follows one of my favorite characters of all time. She is a serial killer. She's a little girly serial killer and she has to lock herself in her apartment because she's like, girl, if I'm on the loose, like I'm gonna be killing people. Like that's just the way that it's gonna be for me. She's kind of accepted it. And so she makes a living as a cam girl locked in her apartment. And we follow all of those like fun, interesting dynamics. She's such a dynamic character until one day she comes across something happening on the internet that she's like, I think I need to leave my apartment and go investigate this further. But she has to mentally prepare herself to go on a killing spree as soon as she lets herself out of the room. It's so fun, it's so campy. It doesn't take itself too seriously, which was like my one problem with Strange Darling. And it has that same like cat and mouse feel with a really strong female lead. I would also recommend you Maeve Fly by CJ Lead. Again, we have a female killer perspective and she is in this game of cat and mouse kind of with herself but also with this hockey player she's kind of like i'm this weird girl i am a killer i am dark i am lonely i am avoidant and no one talk to me and just leave me alone to be my weird girl killer self and then she meets this very like normy guy he's literally a hockey player and things turn into like a hockey romance but she's grappling with the fact that she kind of still wants to kill him it's about attachment it's about reflecting on the pieces of ourselves that 
that keep us safe but also guard us from feeling true connection to others. Can you tell this book hit for me in a way? <laughs> I love this book so much. It's so iconic and very very similar to the dynamic between the characters in Strange Darling in a way. I will say this is much more about like love and relationships than Strange Darling. Strange Darling was like pretty pretty much solidly cat and mouse even though they do start out on a date. So yeah definitely some differences there but if you like one I think you'll like the other. And we're getting into our last wreck here except it's not the last wreck. There are four more of these recommendations on Patreon, okay? I always do extended cuts of my sit down recommendation videos on Patreon. There's 12 in a main channel video. There's four more on Patreon. There's 16 total. You can miss out on the four racks if you want to, but if you want them, they're available in the extended cut on Patreon, which I will be linking down below for you. So go check that out if you want it. If not, Here's your last recommendation. It is for the movie Haunt, okay? No one's probably seen this, <laughs> except for my Patreon people because we actually watched this one together. It's a shitty horror movie, okay? It's about this group of teens that go through this haunted house, extreme haunt attraction, and they end up getting picked off one by one by one, really fun straightforward slasher nothing too deep but really entertaining and it has some unexpected elements to it if you enjoyed haunt which not everyone did but i did then i think you would also enjoy you're not supposed to die tonight by kaylin bayron and this is about a group of teens who run a haunted attraction they are the scare actors in a haunted house and their guests are dying one by one by one so we're trying to figure out who's making this haunted attraction low-key like real is there a murderer among them or has someone snuck on to this isolated heavily wooded property to try to kill the patrons and the scare actors themselves and it has that same like unexpected twisty element at the end of this book it was such a quick read it literally took me just like a couple hours to read this book it's kind of short it's YA so it's just easily digestible and if you like a slasher it is so much fun there's also really fun queer representation in here the only issue I had with it was the ending was a little bit abrupt I wanted more to happen with the twist it was a little ambiguous but other than that absolutely love it and with that those are going to be all of my book racks based on movie and tv shows i think i just one show but whatever we're gonna call it that like i mentioned earlier if you want more you can check out the extended cut on patreon thank you so so much for watching this video either way whether you go over to patreon or not i do appreciate your eyes on the screen right now thank you so much for supporting me if you enjoyed this video go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and of course don't forget to go to therapy and read a book this week that is an order queen and and king and non-binary royalty. Thanks again for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!